Hey guys, how's it going? Big Squatch and TG here. And uh, today we're just gonna be running through a Mr. House deck I just threw together. And uh, checking out these Prismatic Defender uh, home graphics sleeves. I think these guys are new. I have had some of the uh, inner sleeves for a few of my decks here. Which, yeah. You know, they, they fit and they look nice so I don't have a whole lot negative to say about them by any means but you know you don't really shuffle those ones all the time so we'll check these guys out and see how they do so this deck for anyone that doesn't know Mr. House just wants you to roll a bunch of dice uh, it says whenever you roll a 4 or higher create a 3-3 three, three colorless robot artifact creature token then if you rolled a 6 or higher, instead create that token and a treasure. Then you can tap 4, pay 4, and tap M to roll a 6-sided die, plus an additional 6-sided die for each mana from treasure spent to activate the ability. Which, uh, you know, like, that's alright, but it's kind of like, uh, who was it, Marnius Kalgar or whatever from the Warhammer precons, where... If you really got nothing going on, you can go ahead and make make yourself some tokens, but there really ought to be some better ways to do that. And sadly in this pre-con there just wasn't much for good ways to do that. There we go, I also got this sign of King Luke land. Figured I'd go ahead and throw it in there with the sleeves I got from them. So we got 10 of each basic lands, the swamp, plains, and the mountain, and then we got uh, 6 non-basics over here. I don't know how I feel about these lands, I, I love the whole Ixalan set, or block from before, and uh, it looks really cool, but it looks just so much more like a, like a promo card or an ad card than even the other, like, you know, full art special lands and stuff. Like, that's what it makes me think of. But it does look neat in this sleeve, though, that's for sure. So, uh, I haven't gone out and bought anything for this deck yet, so everything I've got in here is just stuff I've had sitting around. I've got a cliff top retreat. Uh, foreboding ruins from one of those Warhammer decks. Then everything's gonna have a command tower. A smoldering marsh. Raucous theater from uh, what was it? Uh, Markov Manor pre-release, I think. And we got Sacred Foundry I got from uh, Ravnica Remaster. And we got a little bit of dice rolling here, Book Nerds Everful Purse. It's not really uh, what we're looking for in this deck, but it just kind of matched the theme for a, for a low level build, it seemed alright. But it only rolls a d4, so you don't have very good odds of uh, getting any robots or treasures out of that one. Merkel's Edict, which uh, for one in the black is not bad. The Sorcery roll a d20, which we have very good odds of hitting uh, both the treasure and the robot from our commander. Then on a 1 through 9, I choose an opponent that player sacks a creature. 10 through 19, each opponent sacks a creature. And then on a 20, each opponent sacks a creature with the greatest power among creatures that player controls. Yeah, Circuits Act from the uh, Unfinity set. You're gonna roll three six-sided die for each different result. Choose a 1-1 one, one white clown. Create a 1-1 one, one white clown robot artifact creature token. So, you know, we're gonna get three of them. It's still less than the four that a uh, house is gonna charge us for. So... Even if we don't care about the 1-1 one, one clown tokens, but because we do get tokens, I think the war leader calls in here, but we'll get to that later anyway. We have a Valiant Endeavor here to roll 2d6. 
Uh, not as good as Reckless Endeavor by any means. I don't think I've played it in any decks. But, uh, yeah, roll 2d6, why not? And I'm gonna make some White Knight tokens with Vigilance and, uh, destroy all the creatures with power greater than or equal to another one. So we got Attempt and Murder. Choose target creature, roll X six sided dice for each even result. Put two one neg one neg one counters on that creature for each odd result. Create a one two bluebird creature token of flying named Stormcraft. We got a slight malfunction. So we're gonna choose one, destroy artifact, or roll a six sided die. When you do slight malfunction deals one damage to each of up to X target creatures where X is the result. Which, you know, I kind of thought about putting that in my dinosaur deck just for the enraged thing. We got a recruitment drive. We're going to roll a d20. We're either going to make two white creature tokens, two white knight creature tokens, or three white knight creature tokens. Either way, we're probably going to be making a robot token and a treasure. We got reckless endeavor, which everyone's pretty familiar with by now. You roll 2d12 and choose one uh, to deal that much damage to each creature, and the other, you're going to make that many treasures. We got Rising of the Day, in case we uh, go ahead and get a whole bunch of tokens in one turn, they can all have haste. Barbarian class to get those extra dice rolls and maybe some haste. I don't think they will trigger the commander a second time, because it is ignored but it does give me better odds, so. And my buddy had a deck, uh, an attractions deck, where that kind of bit him in the ass a few times, having the lowest roll ignored instead of choosing a roll to ignore. But with mine, the higher is always better, so it works out. So we got Berserker's Frenzy here. So it's an instant, but we can only cast it before combat or during combat before blockers are declared. So we're going to roll 2d20 and ignore the lower roll. So again, that won't trigger with house because it's ignored. On a 1 through 14, we're going to choose any number of creatures. They're going to block this turn if able. And on a 15 to 20, you choose which creatures block this turn and how those creatures block. So that would be pretty sweet if it ever happens. And then, you know, more robots. So here we got Faraday's Fireball. It's an instant. Again, uh... It's going to deal 5 damage to target creature or player, and then I roll a d20. And then uh, on a 1 through 9, it deals 2 damage to each player, and on a 10 through 20, it deals 2 damage to each opponent. And we got a 6 sided die. We're going to choose target creature, then roll a 6 sided die. On a 1, it has base toughness 1 until the end of the turn. On a 2, you put 2 neg 1 neg 1 counters on it. On a 3, 6-sided die deals 3 damage to it, and you gain 3 life. On a 4, it gets neg 4, neg 4 till the end of the turn. On a 5, destroy it. On a 6, exile. And then we got on a 4, or 5, or a 6, we make a robot. On a 6, we also make a treasure spell. I'm just trying to beat that into my head before I miss a bunch of these uh, triggers. We got uh, our tokens, Dramatic Finale. Our creature tokens get plus one, plus one, and whenever one or more non-token creatures I control die, I'm going to create a 2-1 white and black inkling creature token with flying, but it triggers only once a turn. Then we got a uh, War Leader's Call. Creatures we control get 1-1. One, one. Whenever a creature enters battlefield under your control, War Leader's Call deals one damage to each of them. got to Celebrate Thousand. It's uh, pretty wordy. At the beginning of combat on your turn, roll two six-sided dice. For each result of one, celebrate thousand gets plus one plus one till the end of turn. For each other result, it gains in indicated ability until end of turn. If you roll doubles, it also gains double strike until the end of turn. So you get two, you get menace, three, vigilance, four, lifelink, five, flying, six, indestructible. But we get to roll two d6 every turn. Chaos Dragon to roll a d20 every combat. 
So we got the swarming goblins. When swarming goblins enter this battlefield, you roll a d20. On a 1 through 9, create a 1 1 red goblin. Uh, token on a 10 through 19, create 2. On a 20, create 3 of those. Then we got Earth Cult Elemental. It says, uh, when the ETBs roll a d20, on a 1 through 9, each player sacks a permanent. On a 10 through 19, each opponent sacks a permanent. On a 20, each opponent sacks two permanents. We got a Chaos Chandler, which, uh, whenever it attacks, we're gonna roll a d20. 1 through 9, exile top card of your library. You may play it this turn. 10 through 19, exile the top 2 cards of your library, you may play them this turn. Or on a 20, exile the top 3 cards of your library, you may play them this turn. So just a little random impulse drawing. We got Hoarding Ogre. And on attack, on a 1 through 9, on attack we roll a d20. On a 1 through 9, create a treasure token. 10 through 19, create 2. On a 20, create 3. Then we got Lightfoot Road. Uh, Whenever Lightfoot Rogue attacks, we're going to roll a d20. 1 through 9, it gains Death Touch. 10 through 19, it gains 1 0 and Death Touch. 20, it gains 3 0, First Strike and Death Touch. We have Delina Wild Mage. Uh, she, on attacks, you roll a d20. Then you're going to, on a 1 through 14, create a tapped and attacking token that's a copy of that creature, except it's not legendary and has exiled this creature in the combat. On a 15 through 20, you create one of those tokens and roll again. So, obviously that's our idea, ideal uh, scenario there. We got Herald of Hadar. It says a uh, circle of death, pay 5 and a black, and then roll a d20. On a 1 through 9, each opponent loses 2 life. On a 10 through 19, each opponent loses 2 and you gain 2. On a 20, each opponent loses 2 and you gain 2, then you create 2 treasures. So, it's really got to be desperate times to be paying for that one, but it is supposed to be somewhat low level. So I tried to throw a couple, uh, a couple things in there that wouldn't have normally made the cut. We got Brazen Dwarf. For every time we roll a die, uh, Brazen Dwarf will deal one damage to each opponent. Well, one or more die, so it does not count on our multiple rolls in one. And we got a Mirkwood Bats. For uh, whenever we sacrifice those treasures, and uh, every time we make an, a treasure or a robot. Alright guys, that just about wraps it up today. So uh, I'm just going to show the rest of the cards on screen here real quick. And then for that one guy who's uh, fallen asleep and still left behind, if you can go ahead and subscribe, that'd be greatly appreciated. Let the rest of these cards show, and I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. You guys have a great day.